What's going on guys? Julio Franco here coming back at you with another video and today we are doing another Madden NFL 18 rebuild. This is the realistic rebuild of the Atlanta Falcons, one of the most talented teams in the NFL that for one reason or another has not been able to win the big one, whether it's that infamous game that we're not even going to talk about for the sake of you Falcons fans, or whether it was this year with again, debatably an even more talented roster, Desmond Trufant coming back from injury. You had the addition of Dontari Poe, Grady Jarrett really excelling into his prime as a young player. Robert Alford even got better. Keanu Neal isn't a rookie anymore. He had an excellent second season. But somehow, with Julio Jones, with Matt Ryan coming off of an MVP season, with Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman in the backfield, with, I mean, Muhammad Sanu is all right, but Austin Hooper is all right. Somehow still really couldn't put up more than 10 wins. And, you know, that's not to say that 10 and 6 is a particularly bad record. I'm pretty sure they went 10 and 6. Um, but, you know, they are in the same division with the Saints. The Panthers were a decent team this past season. The Bucks probably should have been better than they were. But they're not an awful, awful team when you look at other teams out there like the Colts, Browns, etc. This Falcons team is arguably the most talented in the NFL. It is a travesty that they do not perform better on the field. We're going to see if we can get them to a Super Bowl in this particular rebuild. Also, I know I, I hate to yammer on. I'm sorry about the lighting. Lighting is kind of bad. That's what it is. Uh, I've moved a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. Also, I now have a new mic. Here it is. I got an arm and everything. I'm a real professional. I don't know what the audio sounds like right now. It probably can't be that good. And, um... Yeah, I mean, I hope hope everything sounds really good. Hope the mic works. This is better than Blue Yeti. Has to be. Has to be. Uh, I'm going to tweak around with some settings, but I think overall this is going to be an excellent experience. Better for you guys, better for me. And I am super excited, so let's go ahead and see what we can do with this Atlanta Falcons team. Sticking with the trend of realism, you know, there will be some, you know, not really outlandish moves, but we will sign a top free agent or two over the course of this, perhaps. We will maybe trade down or trade up in the draft, depending on what we see fit, but we're going to err on the side of realism. So I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. Also, shout out to my cat for getting her two cents in in that intro there. Um, but yep, just going over the team a little bit further, we got Taylor Gabriel in the slot. Of course, Matt Ryan is the quarterback. And again, erring on the side of realism, trying to do pretty much realistic moves only. We have to look to upgrade the offensive line. Now, Ryan Schrader has been a decent option in the past, but getting up near his 30s, yeah, he's 29. Not sure how viable of an option he's going to be at only an 80 overall in this. Harlow, was Spencer, Sean Harlow. Yeah, I thought it was Spencer for a minute. I don't know why. He's okay. He's a rookie. We could look to develop him. He's not too bad. Andy Levitre is too old. He's probably got to go. 31, 85 overall. That's going to continue to drop over the course of this. We will look to probably draft the inside. Uh, interior offensive lineman, I should say. Jake Matthews is excellent at that spot for the sake of this realistic rebuild. Austin Hooper probably will be fine as well. On the defense side of the ball, I'm going to look to rearrange this defense a little bit because I don't particularly want Adrian Claiborne or Brooks Reed. I would like to transition into uh, more of a 4-3 style team, and that's going to have to have Vic Beasley moving down to play defensive end. Now, I can do Tack McKinley and Vic Beasley at my end slots, but that means Brooks Reed and Adrian Claiborne no longer have any value to me. So, I think I might throw them up on the trade block, and I know, you know, it's not necessarily realistic to do that, um, but this isn't exactly, it's not just simulation, whatever. We are going to make some moves. Adrian Claiborne is near 30. He's 29. Brooks Reed is in a similar spot as well. He's 30 slow development if we can't move on from them so be it but i am looking to move on from these guys i accidentally started at um week one instead of the preseason so that kind of sucks but i am going to add both these guys to the trade block devon de campbell's fine i probably will look to upgrade outside linebacker at some point but i am going to slide vic beasley down to probably play right end and make sure we're in some kind of a 4-3 defense uh, I'm going to change from the Atlanta Falcons defensive playbook to a different, you know, like more traditional 4-3 set 
because Vic Beasley rushing the passer 100% of the time makes the most sense. He's an 84 overall right end, um, but he really doesn't have any zone coverage ability. 64 zone, he hasn't looked fluid in zone coverage when he's had to play it. I don't want that to be a thing. He's got 88 speed, so tremendous speed, but also he can go after the passer a little bit. 75 finesse move, needs to get boosted. That's what we'll focus on for him. Um, but other than that, those two are on the trade block. I'm going to simulate and accept offers for them, probably whatever I can get. Want to upgrade from Ricardo Allen. Whether Demonte Kazee is that guy, I'm not sure. Uh, he's not really particularly good. I'll probably look to <laughs> upgrade from him. I don't know. Let's go ahead and simulate a week and see what offers might be on the table. All right, we do actually have offers for both of them. I'm going to be accepting whatever I get here. I know maybe it's not everyone's favorite thing, um, but makes the video at least a little bit more entertaining. I would do with a 2018-2 from Denver for Adrian Claiborne there. And then Brooks Reed, I would really accept pretty much anything. A round one from New England is interesting. Now, Brooks Reed does have a decent amount of value. He's an 86 overall, so he will help out any team that he goes to. I'm going to accept a next year's first round pick, so it doesn't have as much value as a pick this year would, but that still is a first rounder. Uh, and so Brooks Reed is headed to New England. He's actually a player that probably fit really, really well as a replacement for Rob Ninkovich. And then Adrian Claiborne is going to help out that pass rush in Denver. That's where we are. The two-back setup is going to be kind of weird, but we're going to rock with it. Need to re-sign Tevin Coleman. I'm just going to see you guys at the midseason mark and catch you up on where we are. So, 4-3 and three at the midseason mark. This seems like typical Falcon form that we've seen over the past season. Dontari Poe is our top priority free agent in terms of overall. Uh, I totally forgot to change the scheme, as I usually do, and I'm not even sure who's getting it. I mean, it looks like we're still in a traditional 4-3, but I am going to adjust the scheme. Fun fact about Derek Coleman, by the way, found out the other day, Derek Coleman is legally deaf. He's like, without his hearing aids, he can't hear a thing. So when he's on the field, uh, he reads lips. So quarterback Matt Ryan... Previously, Russell Wilson was on the Seahawks. I watched a whole thing on this. They turn around and they tell him to play and he reads their lips and he knows what it is. That's wild. Props to Derek Coleman, deaf player, first ever deaf player in the NFL. Absolutely wild. Schemes have been changed. Got to bring, uh, bring back Dontari Poe. Who else here? Tevin Coleman, I think, is going to be here. Ricardo out. No Tevin Coleman? Maybe that's next year. So we have another year in him. I definitely want to bring back Taylor Gabriel. I want to bring back Matt Bryant if he's interested, which I'm sure he will be. Ricardo Allen, I'm mixed on because he's a solid player. He's young. We don't necessarily need an upgrade. I'll probably offer him a contract. So brought back everyone from Taylor Gabriel all the way down to Dontari Poe. I really don't have a vested interest in Ataba Rubin. He's 31 years old. Not particularly good. Austin Pastor, kind of the same thing. Courtney Upshaw has really never been good. Um, he was actually, I believe, a first-round pick for the Ravens a bunch of years back. Not a bunch, but like, you know, five all the rest here, just really not interested in. Certainly interesting. We have a first round buy. Finished 10 and 6. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> the Falcons finished 10 and 6 on this year also. This time, it guarantees them a first round buy. Not sure how that works. 4,400 yards passing for Matt Ryan. 29 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Rushing Devontae Freeman, nearly 1,500 yards, 14 touchdowns. Tevin Coleman, 8 touchdowns. Receiving Julio Jones, nearly had... 1,400 yards, seven touchdowns for him. Taylor Gabriel with seven touchdowns in the slot, nearly 900 yards. Mohamed Sanu with just over 800 yards. Austin Hooper, decent season as well, almost 700 yards. Sacks allowed. Uh, looks to be about, what, 15, 18 from our offensive line. None from the center. Alex Mack, despite playing a lot of snaps. Defensively, Deion Jones led our team in tackles with 123. Tackles for loss would be 12 from Dantari Poe, 10 from Grady Jarrett, 10 sacks for Poe. We got nine for Takaris McKinley, five and a half for Vic Beasley. Need to get that number up. Interceptions, five for Deion Jones, two for Ricardo Allen. I've been talking about it forever. They need to fix it so a linebacker doesn't lead with interceptions every single time. Like, you look at one of our top cornerbacks, our top cornerback, he's a 93 overall, Desmond Trufant, right? He has 90-man, 86 zone, no interceptions on the year. 
Maybe he didn't meet his season goal, and now he might have his development get downgraded. I know. Okay, you see one interception, one interception for the past two years. Um, you got to look at the games played, playing through injury. He's a guy that should catch at least one interception per season in terms of simulation, especially getting better each year. So that's a little bit frustrating. Hopefully next year they have that uh, figured out. Two forced fumbles for Sean Weatherspoon and Deion Jones with the team. Not a whole lot of recoveries, only three total. And then when there's one defensive touchdown, it's Ricardo Allen. Decent. Hopefully somebody won an award, although I kind of doubt it. Tom Brady gets MVP. Um, Matt Ryan in there at number 10 for MVP. NFC Offensive Player of the Year, Russell Wilson. Devontae Freeman in there at number 5. Matt Ryan at 8. Did I miss Devontae Freeman in there for MVP? No, I didn't. He's just not in there. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Brandon Graham. Bunch of Eagles up top here. Vinny Curry is somewhat surprising. Michael Kendricks is even in there. Deion Jones in there at number 10 as Mitchell Trubisky wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. No Falcons. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is Ruben Foster. No. Actually, you know what? Tack McKinley gets in there at number 9. Our divisional matchup will... Pretty funnily enough, be against the Los Angeles Rams at Mercedes-Benz. This is the game that um, the Falcons ended up winning. So, But that was also a wild card matchup. So we'll see how this divisional one goes. Going to upgrade the team first, though. Ricardo Allen made the Pro Bowl and got quick development. So looks like we have our free safety of the future. If you're upset about me potentially moving on from him. He's pretty much a lot to stay on the team now. Upgraded team, looking fairly nice. Devontae Freeman's up to a 99 overall with confidence. Defensively, not major upgrades. Ricardo Allen only went up to an 86 overall. It's pretty much just play rec and awareness for him. Uh, I worked on tackle, worked on block shit a little bit. Trying to get those up. Rest of the team, it's coming together fairly nicely. Still, again, looking to upgrade offensive, uh, offensive line, outside linebacker. But now we got to focus on the divisional to advance to the conference championship. Do the Falcons pull it off and beat the Rams? They do not. Dude, I hate Sim. <laughs> I hate it so much. It is what it is. All right, you know what? Two closely uh, matched teams in terms of overall. This time, the Rams, I guess, were the better team. They beat us, and uh, we're going to have to, uh, you know, adjust, reassess, and, um, you know, make those changes moving forward to year number two. Try to get in a similar place and hope those adjustments worked out for the best and we can get back there and to be successful this time. We're headed to free agency. Very interesting free agent class. <laughs> Le'Veon Bell's here. The second time that I've ever seen him in any of these rebuilds, realistic or not, Le'Veon Bell's here, obviously, with Devontae Freeman, with Tevin Coleman. There's absolutely no need for a third running back. Um, and, you know, the rest are pretty much just running backs here. No one that I'm really too interested in. Oh, look at Brooks Reed, down to an 82 overall. Sucks to suck. <laughs> Playing with good confidence, though. All right, NFL draft time. I've got a feeling this is going to be one of my best draft classes overall. Hopefully, I'm not incorrect in that assessment. We pick 26th in the first round. We also have the 35th overall pick and another second rounder at, uh, where is that? 58th. All right, let's go ahead and make some magic happen. Draft some studs. First pick is going to be a cornerback. Stuart Kershaw out of USC. We do have some talented cornerbacks on the roster. Obviously, Desmond Trufant, Robert Alford's decent. Um, I think Stuart Kershaw could be even better. Very fast, has the cover skills. I think he just has a higher upside. Brian Poole is even a very good nickel corner. But here he is, Stuart Kershaw, 81 overall, going to be the third ranked player in the entire draft. We take about 26, 96 speed, 80 man, 84 zone, 80 press. Very solid player, a lot of upside. Hopefully, he turns out to be a beast. He's already the same overall as Robert Alford. He could start immediately. Round two now. A couple of tight ends still on the board. Corey Vance is a guy that was really up there pretty high and dropped off substantially for whatever reason. Uh, we do already have Austin Hooper, but you go down the board here, and there aren't that many players that I really want at this particular spot. I might take one of these tight ends and hope for the best. Uh, I'm going after Corey Vance. He's 6'6", incredibly fast, has the ability... Even if he has slow development, which I sure hope he doesn't, um, he has all the intangibles. He can even play well. His skills are great. Here he is. Slow development. You saw it coming. Uh, but 87 speed is not slow, especially for a tight end. 80 catching, 84 spectacular catch, 80 catching traffic. All we have to do is work on route running and awareness. He'll be really good. 
great value pick. He's ranked number 22 in the class. We take him at 35. Just a slow development does hurt us. We'll have to take a look at that other tight end, Eric, whatever his name is, and um, and see how good he was comparatively. But uh, I'm not mad at that pick. I think it was pretty good. Tight, other tight end still on the board. He hasn't gone yet, has he? I don't think so. No, Eric Gary. Still on the board. I'm not going to take him. Can't. I will, however, take Lorel Wims out of Texas. Hook him horns. He looks incredible. Not only was his combine ridiculous, his top three skills are along the same lines. 22 years old. He has slow development as well. I don't give a shit. He's ranked number six in the class. We took him at 58. Excellent value pick. 87 speed, 87 tackle, 82 block shed, 88 hit power. Power and finesse move are kind of mad. We are planning to play him at outside linebacker. Zone coverage got to get boosted at only a 64. Got to boost awareness. Got to boost play rec. Very, very good pick. I am incredibly excited. I know slow development. Every player I draft nowadays is slow development. I don't know what it is, but can't be mad about that. Excellent player, especially at the pick. We're having a killer draft. I'm going to take another cornerback here. Miles Nelms out of Nevada. Really secure that cornerback group. Brian Poole, Robert Alford, that drafted Stewart something. I don't really give a shit. Desmond Trufant, and now Miles Nelms. Looks tremendous. Not an amazing combine, but his top three skills are good. We're going to take him in the third round. He looks like a good player for this uh, pick. And he's actually going to be a 70 overall with quick development. Ranked number 32 in the class. We took him at 90. 88 speed, 87 man, 84 zone, 78 press. And again, quick development, solid. Uh, really good cornerback. He's probably going to play over Brian Poole. And we don't really need Robert Alford anymore. He'll still probably play as that player we just drafted is probably going to be our cornerback number four for right now. Next up on the board is Harvey Lindley out of North Texas. Small-time school, hoping for a big-time player. He's got good top three skills, had a good combine. 4.71 speed, may have been the 13th fastest middle linebacker, but that's not a particularly slow speed. So hoping he's a really good player, and he is. Superstar development, 77 overall, ranked number 36 in the class. We took him at 122. We're getting really, really good value picks. He also could start at outside linebacker. 83 speed, 86 tackle, 81 block shed, 92 hit power, 78 pursuit. What is your zone coverage? 70. Very interesting. We've had a really, really interesting draft class. That's the only thing I can say about it right now. It's been interesting. Next up, we're going offensive line. Cedric Childs out of Delaware State. Good top three skills. Could come in immediately and start at right guard if he's good enough. He's going to be ranked number 47 in the class. We took him at 154. 75 overall, 80, 83 strength. You wish that was a bit higher, but 86 run block is great. 77 pass block can be improved upon. 90 impact block is fantastic. And then 58 awareness is very easily upgraded. Normal development, you know, you're hoping for better, obviously, but that's, you know, pretty much baseline normal. Not too bad. Round six, I wanted to take another linebacker. He got taken. We're going to go Keyshawn Curry out of Minnesota instead. Decent top three skills, very strong. Here he is. 76 overall, another excellent pick. He's ranked number 38 in the class. We took him at 186. Every pick so far has been so good for value. 91 strength, 83 run block, 77 pass block, 79 impact block. He's a decent player, and with the seventh round pick, we're probably just going to take a shot in the dark and hope for the best. Maybe a wide receiver? I'm not sure. We're just going to take the top player available out of Northern Illinois. Don't really know much about him, Laquan Thornton. He doesn't look good in terms of combine ability. He's not a good player. You didn't know anything about him. Uh, I'm not going to let that hinder the draft class. I thought about trading down. I just didn't really care enough to. Going over the draft class. I don't really care about the tight end, by the way. Every single pick in here, besides the last guy, Laquan Thornton, I'm uh, I'm very pleased with. He's not even terrible. Ah, he's pretty bad. Uh, but everyone else here is really, really solid and, come in and could come in and play really immediately. Um, Kershaw will start for sure. He'll be my cornerback too. Probably. Maybe Alfred will still. I'm not, I'm not sure what I want to do there. Corey Vance could start immediately. We're going to play him as the understudy to Austin Hooper for the time being. Maybe we'll give him a shot at fullback. Larell Wims is an interesting case because he is higher overall. Could play him as a situational pass rusher. But also we drafted Harvey Lindley out of North Texas superstar development. I kind of have to play him. And then Miles Nelms was a solid pick. Cedric Childs could come in and start immediately. Keyshawn Curry could come in and start immediately at right tackle. I think we're going to play him as a backup for this year and uh, reassess next year 
because we still do have some solid guys in there. Schrader, Ryan Schrader is going to stay at right tackle. Uh, I think Sean Harlow is going to stay at right guard for right now. And we're going to keep Childs as a backup. Maybe we'll see if he can play long snapper. Uh, I don't know. Doesn't look like it's an option. I'm going to go ahead and rearrange this team the way I want it. Things are looking pretty good. Yeah, I got, is Robert Alfred? How old are you? 29 already? I thought he was like 27. That's my, well, I mean, I guess. Uh, regression, regression sucks. I guess he would. He would have been 28 um, before this season. All right. I'm going to rearrange, figure out where I want everyone to play. We're in an interesting spot. I could easily change to a, to a 3-4. Not easily, but let's see. Dantari Poe would be my nose. Grady Jarrett would be a 3-4 end. I could probably play Tack McKinley as a 3-4 end. He'd be undersized very much for the position, though. He'd most likely be an outside linebacker. I don't really have the personnel right now. Because that'd be outside linebacker, middle linebacker, starting middle linebacker, outside linebacker. Oh, interesting. Devondre Campbell doesn't make sense in that scenario. Hmm. I guess my defense sucks ass. <laughs> I got skill regression. I'm play rec and awareness from Ricardo Allen. That's annoying. All right. All right. Here's the team. Everyone's at the you know respective positions, backups included. Um, Vance is going to start at fullback. We'll see if he can maybe make a Pro Bowl that way. Get him off his slow development. That'd be fantastic. Defensively, we're running an odd look. Lindley's going to start at right outside linebacker. Deion Jones will be our starting middle. Devondre Campbell is going to be our left outside linebacker now. And Wims is going to be the backup to all of those positions. Starting Kershaw at CB2 and then Nelms at CB4. Brian Poole's moved to the five. Other than that, we're good. I'm going to simulate to the midseason mark and see you there. Awesome. Six and one at the midseason mark. Matt Ryan's a free agent. Probably need to bring him back. Panthers are hot on our tail. We're going to go ahead and bring back Matty Ice. See if uh, ooh, Grady Jarrett and Tevin Coleman and Jake Matthews and Vic Beasley. I'm done with Andy Levitre. Brian Poole at this point. It's not a necessary re-signing. I do love Justin Hardy, ECU guy. Hmm. I need Matty Ice. The boys are back in town. Uh, boys are back. I don't, I don't know what we're doing here. Um, I don't even really like that song, I gotta be honest. Pretty much everyone there that you saw just now is back. Andy Levitre over the right pretty much is not. These are the remaining guys. We're gonna deal with them at another time. Andy Levitre pretty much is as good as gone if he continues to regress. I'm going to simulate to the playoffs without upgrading anybody. Um, I'm going to use Coach XP, actually. I'm going to use Coach XP. We're 7-2. and two. Ugh, Rough. All right, back to the sim. See you for the playoffs. 7-2. and two. We'll finish 12-4, and four, probably. All right. First round bye. Boom, 12-4. and four. Yeah, you know, simple math. 7-2. and Two, two losses at the midseason point-ish. Probably finish with four. Check out the stats, see exactly how it happened. Matty Ice, 4,142 yards, passing 37 touchdowns, 14 picks, rushing. Devontae Freeman this time got over 1,500 yards, 7 touchdowns. Tevin Coleman, double-digit TDs as well with 10, or not as well, I guess only. 1,100 yards for Julio, 11 TDs, just over 1,000 yards, and 9 touchdowns for Taylor Gabriel, 800 yards for Mohamed Sanu. Might look to upgrade at um, wide receiver as Jake Matthews let up more in the sack per game. Because Madden Sim is stupid. Deion Jones, 139 tackles, led the team. Tackles for loss, 14 from Dontari Poe. QB sacks, 9.5 for Poe. 8.5 from Tack McKinley. Not getting a whole lot of pressure on the QB. Four picks for Desmond Trufant. That's better. Four for Robert Alford. Two for uh, Harvey Lindley, Deion Jones, Stuart Kershaw, the rookie. Interesting. Miles Nelms Miles Nelm's even got one. Whoa. Force fumbles. One for a bunch. I don't really care about recoveries. We, yeah, No touchdowns. Show me awards. Aaron Rodgers wins MVP. Tom Brady's still around. All right. Matt Ryan at five. No other Falcons. NFC Offensive Player of the Year, Aaron Rodgers. Matt Ryan at three. Devontae Freeman at five. Defensive Player of the Year, Brandon Graham again. Deion Jones is six. Moving on up in the world. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Jalen Phillip. Corey Vance at three. That could be a Pro Bowl. I don't know. Defensive Rookie of the Year, 
Alan Banta. Harvey Lindley at two. Stuart Kershaw at five. Miles Nelms at seven. That's unfortunate. It is. It is unfortunate. What's the XP situation? That doesn't look like a Pro Bowl at all. That looks like nothing. That looks like a shitty season. Not a whole lot of XP for anybody. That's not a Pro Bowl. I don't think anyone made the Pro Bowl. Maybe Devontae Freeman did. That's a Pro Bowl, yeah. Defensively, any Pro Bowls about? Maybe Deion Jones got one? Oh, it doesn't look like he did, actually. Did Harvey Lindley do something? Nah, just superstar. All right. Okay. I'm going to probably upgrade these guys. What? How did you get more XP? Quick development opposed to normal. That'll do it. Team has been upgraded. We've advanced out of the divisional. Oh, it's it's an interdivisional divisional matchup in the divisional. That's too many divisionals. The 10 and 6 Saints stand in the way. This is the upgraded team. One dream to not get knocked out like Alistair Overeem. See you in the game. I forgot. I don't even play. I don't know what we're doing. 92 overall to 92 overall. I'll see you in the conference championship. I'm a little bit hungover about my rhymes. I'm the uh, I'm the Dr. Seuss of the Madden community. Oh, and we're moving on to the conference championship against the Vikes. 12-4 and four against 12-4. and four. We're headed to the Super Bowl potentially with a win here. And we've made it. Falcons, Jaguars could have happened this year. It didn't because that's unlikely and it just didn't end up playing that out that way. But here we go. Not going to bother using XP. The juice is loose. I am Dr. Seuss about to make Jacksonville put up a goose egg. I don't I don't know what I'm doing here. Like I'm going to fucking stop. But we're going to move on into the game. We're going to go into the usual simulation style and see if the Falcons could beat the Jaguars. Could a Falcon beat a Jaguar in a in a battle? Could be a cool TD Barrett video. I don't know. Uh, it might, might already be one already. Could a Falcon beat up a Jaguar in a fight? Who knows? Let's go ahead and, and see how this one plays out. All right, Super Bowl time. We're up early. 7 nothing. Make it 10-6 somehow. They scored very quickly and missed an extra point because that's how Madden works. Looks like we may have missed one as well. 13-13. Now 16-13 to 13 as Jacksonville answers with a field goal. We're down, uh, and now we missed another extra point. We're down 30-22, to 22, and um, now 33-22 is your final score here. Why don't you jump in and play the game? Well, it's not going to be a, a two-hour video. My videos are long enough. We got to, we gotta, you know, manage our jump-ins. We'll give the Jaguars their first ever Super Bowl championship, provided they didn't actually win it uh, last year in this, in this simulation. Whatever. You're three. We keep advancing one further game. That's actually... What? No. We uh, we didn't make the conference championship last year. We got eliminated in the divisional. I'm pretty sure. But if progression means anything, which it does, I don't know. Uh, we should be able to come out here, maybe get a marquee free agent, marquee player, and uh, advance to the Super Bowl and actually win this time. That'd be great. Levitre is a free agent. Andy Levitre. I probably don't want him. I probably don't. Brian pulls up to an 80. I probably I'd want that back. Andy Leach is 33. Ugh. Do I want? I mean, he's an 84 overall. He's you figure he'd start to regress at some point, but it just hasn't happened. Alex Mack is regressing. You gotta wonder why is Andy Levitre not at all? If Alex Mack is getting worse, and he's 33. How is Andy Levitre? Has he discovered the fountain of youth? He just does not regress. Made a Pro Bowl. I gotta hold on to him. Sean Harlow's getting better. I, I can't let him go. I can't do it. Andy Levitre has returned. Really no interest in Ty Sambrello. One of the worst offensive tackles ever to play the position. Right up there with my man Eric Flowers and uh, TJ Clemmings. And um, Chaz Green. Marking groups here. Taylor Lewan is here. Trevor Williams also. Taylor Lewan would be really helpful. Play him at right tackle. I need this. Taylor Lewan has accepted. He's the newest Atlanta Falcon. He will be playing right tackle. Uh, I don't know what. I just. I'm not upgrading him right now. He's playing right tackle. It's one thing I don't have to go after in the draft. 
Ryan Schrader, I'm sorry. We've upgraded over you. You're okay. Taylor Lewan is better. He's got he's to gotta be the guy. All right, NFL draft time. Here we go. I don't even know what I need. Pretty much offensive line is fine. Maybe a wide receiver. Maybe. Yeah, that's pretty much it, I guess. And we don't even really need a receiver that badly. The receivers pretty much suck. Christian Treader's like the only usable one. I'm going to draft him just because we need him. Um, he can't run routes for shit. Okay. Oh, this is a first rounder. Um, that was New England's first rounder. This is technically our first rounder. I don't, like, I don't need a running back. What would I even draft here? See, that's the interesting thing about this lineup, is it's so good, top to bottom, that you get into these positions, you don't even know what to take. I'm going to say, erring on the side of realism, I'm going to say, in, in the first round, Falcons take a quarterback. We're going Grant Worthington out of Florida. He's not great, good developmental player. I always forget in these realistic rebuilds, I like to use actual... Uh, draft prospects and change their name after the draft but i forgot last year and i pretty i guess i'm not doing that anymore it's kind of whatever all right here we are in what could be the final season we have a backup quarterback now that's cool um we also have a fullback he's a rookie at michigan state yes the cpu drafted him did i simulate the whole draft oh i didn't mean to do that i mean i i kind of probably would have anyway um cpu sucks at drafting except for the you know fullback but that's a fullback it doesn't matter CPU is so bad at drafting. I probably should have just played that one out, but I don't know who I would have taken. We got a decent fourth receiver. Hopefully this team is good enough to get it done. We haven't really made a ton of changes other than, you know, drafting. But it is what it is. All right, this is going to be the team for the third, probably, and final season. Hopefully it is good enough to get it done. I'm not sure that it will be. We could go to a season number four, depending on how things are going. Um, I'm actually just going to let the CPU upgrade all real quick. All right, let's go ahead and simulate straight to the playoffs. Nope, can't do that. I need to re-sign players, so I'm not not going to do that just in case we do go to a season number four. Five and two near the midseason mark. We are not past the trade deadline yet, but I don't really like to make a ton of trades in these realistic style rebuilds, so I'm not going to do that. Vance is proving to be, you know, not a great pick because he just hasn't had a chance to uh, ever really get in there. Because if we just upgraded awareness, upgraded route running and release, this is a very good player. Better ceiling, higher ceiling, better player could be than uh, Austin Hooper. But he's he's really never going to get the chance. 5-2, and two, currently at the top of the division in the NFC South. I'm going to upgrade these players. More likely let the CPU do it because I'm lazy. And uh, see you guys for the playoff. I actually got to resign though, so never mind. This is the upgraded team, by the way, in case you were curious defensively uh things you know not looking too bad let's go ahead and re-sign Deion jones though i'm sure there will be other ones that are top priority Keanu o'neill certainly one of them austin hooper i would certainly like to bring back his run blocking is so critical for this team not a great receiving option he is solid definitely want to bring back devon ray campbell and matt bryant and matt bosher if we can let's go ahead and try and do that all right everyone for matt bosher through Deion Jones is returning. I'm going to simulate to the playoffs, which I am uh, pretty certain that we'll make. Although with Madden simulation, you never know for sure. Ooh, another first round buy. 12 and four in back-to-back -back seasons. I'm sure the Falcons would take that in real life as Matt Ryan has regressed a little bit in terms of yardage, but touchdown interception ratio is much better. 36 to seven with uh, nearly 3,700 yards. Rushing Devontae Freeman, about 1,600 yards, 11 touchdowns. Tevin Coleman with 16 touchdowns, one per game as the backup there. Cecilio Jones finished with 1,111 receiving yards, eight touchdowns. Muhammad Tanu, 10 touchdowns in the slot as Taylor Gabriel was moved to the two. I didn't change it. Blocking, not a whole lot of sacks given up for the usual Madden Sim standards. Is right outside linebacker Harvey Lindley leads our team in tackles with 119. Deion Jones with 115. Tackles for loss, that's not what that is. Tackles for loss, 14 from Grady Jarrett and Dante, uh, Dante, Dantari Poe apiece. Sacks, 8 from Grady Jarrett. We're not getting a lot of pressure on the QB. 6 picks for Deion Jones, 5 for Desmond Trufant, 3 for Ricardo Allen, 1 for a handful of other players. Force fumbles, a lot for a lot of players. And recoveries, yeah, not so many, but still a decent bit. No defensive touchdowns. Show me an MVP. Nah, Aaron Rodgers. 
gets it. No Falcons in here. Sam Bradford with the Giants. Okay. Whoever Allen Gibson is for the Browns. Good to see the Browns with somebody in there, though. NFC Offensive Player of the Year, TG3. If you don't know why that's his nickname, go back to Georgia. I know he's Todd Gurley the second. Probably going to be someone that doesn't get it. Devontae Freeman, seven. Matt Ryan, at nine. Defensive Player of the Year, B Wags. Deion Jones at three. Uh, no other Falcons? Doesn't appear to be. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Howard Campbell. We got Antoine Rhodes, whoever that is, at number six. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year, Walter Trucks. That'd be a sick name for a running back. And uh, no Falcons in there. All right, decent amount of XP for some players. The fullback made the Pro Bowl, so a lot of XP for him. Um, however, it seems to be the trend with this. Defensive players, for me, don't get a ton of XP. Just no one, you know, does that well. Doesn't do well enough to get any major amount of XP. We're going to simulate now to the divisional. See who our matchup is. Going to be the Seattle Seahawks. I'm going to upgrade our team before we uh, we face them at home. Somehow, our backup left tackle, Keyshawn Curry, made the Pro Bowl. I don't know how he has quick development. I don't know if he always had that. Where do you get quick development from? He always had, he did not always have quick. Maybe he had it last year. I don't know how he would have. It would show if he got quick somehow. Uh, I don't know. He looks very good, though. Solid CPU upgraded him nicely. Not sure how he made the Pro Bowl, unless he's my long snapper, which could be the case, uh, which would make sense. I guess he's not either. I don't know. Congrats to him for making the Pro Bowl as a backup. It's very impressive. Can we beat them in the division with Seattle Seahawks? That is, we can. It's the Vikings again in the conference championship to advance to the Super Bowl. We've done it before. Can we do it a second time? We can. And now it's the 12 and 4 Falcons against the 12 and 4 Bolts. The Los Angeles Chargers in Miami. Georgia's quite close to Florida. A lot closer than uh than uh California is, as Georgia actually touches Florida. Fun fact for those of you who are not well versed in geography of the United States. We should be able to get this done. Let's jump in. If we win here, we might try to repeat. If we lose, we might go for redemption. I'm not sure. We'll see how it plays out, whether we play a season four or not. Right now, I'm focusing on the end of season three, and that is the climax of any season in the NFL, the Super Bowl. Hoisting the Lombardi Trophy is our one goal. Can we do it? All right, here we go. Super Bowl Miami. Live from Hard Rock, and we're getting rocked hard. 17-3. to We got to make some sort of a comeback. Uh, and I can't justify jumping in with the score not even being close whatsoever. Only down by 10, though. Got to come back here. Down by 10. Make a stop and score quickly. It's not going to happen. 37-20 to is your final score. As in back-to-back -back years, we lose in the Super Bowl. I'm not going to say the Falcons can't win a Super Bowl. But I suppose if you count real life into this, in the past four years, the Falcons have three Super Bowl appearances and three Super Bowl losses. This is starting to look a lot like the Bills. Starting to look a lot like the Bills, where they lost four in a row. We're going to do a season four. We don't have a ton of cap room and free agency. Could potentially sign someone. Tyreek Hill would be excellent for our team. Carson Wentz would be cool, not going to get him. Chris Jones would be cool, not going to get him. I am super interested, though, in the top free agent available, Tyreek Hill. You look at the offers. He is not getting a lot of offers, and they're not high-quality offers. We could use an awesome speed threat, really take the top off of defenses. Tyreek Hill is getting an offer. Tyreek Hill has accepted and has joined the Atlanta Falcons. Where's Tyreek Hill from? Why do I feel like he's located somewhere in Atlanta? He went to school in West Alabama. Where's he from, though? Tyreek Hill is from Georgia. I was right on the money with that one. All right. Welcome back to Georgia, Tyreek Hill. Welcome to the Dirty Birds, the Atlanta Falcons. Now, even after signing Tyreek Hill, could still use a wide receiver. We're going to be picking 31st in the draft in back-to-back -back years. We did have the Patriots pick, which allowed us to have a number 29 as a Bakhtiari gets drafted, that's interesting. I didn't really scout much. I let the CPU handle it. Uh, I'm pretty much just looking at the top wide receiver available. And Hook'em Horns, Tavares Goodwin, 24 years old, very, very fast. 
Doesn't exactly fit the type of receiver I'm looking for, but I'm not sure how many options we have. Not a whole lot of options. Banks, Banks Medlin looks phenomenal. I don't really feel like sitting through a draft. I'm going to draft him here in the first round. 78 overall, superstar development. Banks Medlin, very fast. He's got the height. He's got the ability. Superstar development. And you can take that one to the Banks. I'm a pussy. <laughs> no, just kidding. See, at the end of the draft, whatever. Let's see how bad the rest of the draft is for the CPU. Um, ooh, Reed Pemberton out of Tennessee in the second. Very, very solid player. Very, very good player. The rest is, you know what? As good as it could have been. You get it. You get it. <laughs> nice. All right. I see you, Atlanta GM. I guess that's technically me. I mean, I guess I'm technically a coach. Um, although I do the drafting. I, I see. I see what's going on here. Oh, no. Actually, that kind of sucks some ass. Alex Mack retired. So I didn't even realize that. And um, so did Andy Levitre. That sucks. However, what we could do, we, instead of starting Childs at right guard, we could go ahead and move Keyshawn Curry. He's so slow. 58 speed is just not going to get it done at guard. And I don't really feel comfortable playing him there at center either. I could put him on the trade block. I'm not going to. And I definitely want Medlin to play. Medlin's going to be our starting slot receiver. I know it doesn't seem great. Actually, he's going to start at the two. Tyreek Hill is going to be lethal in the slot. This is going to be a sweet combo. I'm actually super excited for this. And then defensively, things are still looking pretty solid. Things look really good, actually. We're in a great spot here. I just want to make sure everything's fine. Simulate one week and make sure my whole depth chart's still set. Otherwise, I'll be kind of, kind of annoyed. But it'll be good that I caught it. No, everything looks golden. All right, I'm ready. I will see you guys for the playoffs. It's happening. We're getting it done. Actually, you know what? I want to use Coach XP if I can. I don't really need it for anything other than kicker and punter. Why not? But I will see you guys for the playoffs. We are 2-1 and one so far in the preseason. Not that that matters. But, uh, yeah, we're going straight to the playoffs. Fourth and final season. Two straight Super Bowls. Can we make it a third? And can we finally win one? I should jump in if it's close and secure the W. All Madden's really glitchy, though, so I don't know. All right, another first round bye. 13-3, and three, better than 12-4, and four, if you guys are not students of math. 4,220 yards for Matt Ryan through the air. 37 touchdowns matches his total from last year, although he nearly doubled his interceptions, but with 600 more yards or so, I can't remember exactly what it was last season. That's pretty much to be expected as Devontae Freeman goes absolutely off. Nearly 1,800 yards rushing, 15 touchdowns. Did not fumble the ball once on 363 carries. 14 TDs from Tevin Coleman. Awesome receiving Julio Jones. Sixth season, 1,250 yards, 10 TDs. Austin Hooper, okay. Tyreek Hill went off in the slot. One yard short of Julio's total last year, 11 touchdowns for him. Banks Medlin, only one touchdown. Slot receivers always perform better. Won a Tyreek Hill in that spot. Banks Medlin, as a rookie, played very well. Um, one touchdown, he did his job. It's pretty much what it comes down to. Did his job. What more can you ask for? Offensive line was awesome. Deion Jones led our team with 116 tackles. Tackles for loss, 11 from Grady Jarrett. I should have messed around with the defensive playbook a little bit. Eight and a half sacks for Vic Beasley led the team. Interceptions, five for Deion Jones, four for Desmond Trufant, four for Miles Nelms. Interesting name to see out there. Force fumbles, three from Tack McKinley led the way. He also had three recoveries. <laughs> he led... Uh, or he accounted for 75% of our total fumble recoveries and 100% of our defensive touchdowns. That's crazy. Yearly awards, Leonard Fournette wins MVP as we have Matt Ryan and Devontae Freeman back-to-back -back at 5 and 6. NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Freeman at 2, Matt Ryan at 5. Defensive Player of the Year, AD Aaron Donald, Deion Jones moving up all the way to number 2. Falcons, Harvey Lindley, outside linebacker at 8. Desmond Trufant in the top 10 at number 9. That's funny. Well, not funny, but interesting. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Clay Hoffman. We have Banks Medlin in there at number seven. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year. We It wouldn't make sense for us to have anybody in there. Decent amount of Coach XP. Really can't use it for much. We're going to simulate to the Divisional. We're going to upgrade this team. What's the XP situation looking like? 29K for Banks Medlin. Is that a Pro Bowl? Of course not, but that's superstar development. That's got to be a Pro Bowl for Banks Pemberton. 
Reed. I say Banks. I just came from Banks. He went to the Pro Bowl. So did Sean Harlow. 100% Pro Bowl appearance. Um, we got a decent amount of XP. This is a team that should be able to get it done. Not a whole lot of defensive XP per usual. I mean, some players have a lot. Desmond Trufant, Harvey Lindley, but the rest, eh, under 10K isn't really a whole lot. So that pick of a Banks Medlin has proven to be an awesome one as he is up to an 85 overall in his rookie season. That is really, really nice to see. Um, that, was a, that was a stellar pick. You know, that reach on that fourth round guy, hey, we're not afraid to reach sometimes. We went down the board, we got the player we wanted, and he's a beast. Here's a defense. It looks okay. Probably not one of the best teams I've built uh, in terms of realistic rebuilds. It is what it is. We got to face the pack. We're going to beat them. We're going to lose. <laughs> and that's going to be the video. Wow. The best team by far that we've had. And we are a first round elite. Well, I guess second round. It's a divisional. Um, the team looked really, really good. Not going to do a season five. That's where we're going to cut things short. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed the new mic as well. Hopefully it sounds pretty good. Probably, I don't know. I wonder how this sounds. Probably not very good. But um, regardless... I don't really want it in shot. Yeah, that kind of look. That kind of looks really cool. Um, for for my angle, it's kind of in the way. Uh, I don't really know what we're doing at this point. I just want to thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. Kind of want to get this. It's probably best to be right here. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. What am I doing right now? Take it easy. This shit don't run well.